Hi everyone, I'm Alex York. I'm a reporter at Forbes and I'm here with Jake Shane, Octopus Lover 8 and TikToker and under 30 honoree this year. Jake, welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Well, I'm so excited to chat with you. I want to talk about everything from kind of your rise on social media to now building a business and a career for yourself. Yeah. But before we get into that, I want to go back a little bit. You're 24 now, you're under 30 years old. When you were a kid, did you envision yourself doing anything like this? Um. I don't know. I think I was, I think I had a hard time envisioning what I was going to do in mm -hmm. the future as a kid just because I'm like so anxious. But I think I thought I was going to work in um, public relations of mm -hmm. sorts. I really liked crafting a message to an audience. I always knew I was passionate about that. I, I, I don't think I ever thought any of this was ever going to happen. And I saw that people were like, you know, getting success on TikTok and it, it, it was kind of like, it, it felt less permanent. So it felt mm -hmm. like something I can just kind of try at. I never thought it would turn into what it's turned into. I mean, for right, but I always joke, cause like right before um, all of this happened, like I was so content. Like I was like, I was I was a steady job. Like I was doing TikTok. Like I was like, all right, this is, I'm good for, for life. Like this is what I'm gonna do. And then it all kind of just blew up in the moment. So no, I was not expecting this at all. Yeah, it's super exciting. And the rise of social media for you and so many others has been so rapid. But before you saw that success on social, what were your career plans? And what did you do for a job prior to really blowing up and turning this into your career? Um, I was the executive assistant to a president at a record label. I was really passionate about music. I was talking to him about maybe going into A&R, um, finding new acts. I was I, I wanted to work in the music industry. That was that was my plan. And then um, things kind of changed. What inspired you to post your first TikTok? I would post on and off, um, like over the course of months in like my junior year of college. And then Taylor Swift's um, Red Taylor's version came out and I just filmed me and my two best friends reacting to it. And it actually ended up going viral and um, Taylor liked and commented on it, which was like the best moment of my life. And I was like, damn, this feels really good. Mm -hmm. This is cool. And then I, at the time, was posting octopus reviews to my Instagram, past that puss. And then someone was like, you should bring it to TikTok. And I was like, right, okay. And so I was like kind of bringing it to TikTok. I was kind of lazy about it. And then it was kind of moving the needle. It kind of wasn't. But then I stitched a video a year later. And just, it was like a funny stitch. It was like a two second, like little um, kind of like snippy, like funny stitch and it blew up and then that's when I realized that okay maybe I can start posting a lot and just make it make it a thing like well like let's just see where it goes yeah and I remember I went I had like a thousand followers at the time and I hit 10,000 by January and I thought that was like the most in the world and then by February I was at 60,000 and then I was at a million by the end of February. That's so exciting. Why do you think your content resonated with the young audience and the audience that you have so well? Um, I think I've built a really, really like passionate community. Mm -hmm. um, I've just always been the type to interact with everyone. I think I, I go through my DMs, I talk to everyone. It's It's really like we're friends. So I think kind of when I was my video, because I, I view my TikTok as just like, a year long bit. Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing different bits all the time. Um, the acting one, the skit one just so happened to stick, but there was people that were around for a lot of other bits. So I think when the skits blew up and me and all my followers were celebrating, I think it almost like created this energy that other people were feeling. Maybe, I don't really know, but I also, I don't, I honestly don't know why those skits were the ones that blew up because I know that's just, it's not really that uncommon to do skits on TikTok. I, I mean, I was, I don't, I don't know why they blew up, but I do know that the reason why I've been able to make a career out of this is because of how loyal and passionate um, my followers are. And then moving from the octopus taste testing and all those different bits that you had throughout the months and years to now your comedy sketches that are really, really thriving on the app, you kind of kept that octopus lover brand throughout the entire time. Yeah. Why was that? Why do you think that holding on to that 
helped you or did it help you or wh- why it did you help hold me on so tightly to that because i've never i remember when everything happened and i wanted to change the second i was getting more followers i wanted to change up everything about myself right. i wanted to change my username i wanted to change my profile picture i wanted to change my bio i wanted to change this this that and the other and i was like okay but that's not why sixty thousand people were there before this mm-hmm. and i think it's important to really just never forget who your real authentic self is because i think that's what really shines at the end of the day and i i just i th- i felt like it was a disservice to me and a disservice to like what I've created up until this blow up to get rid of all the octopus stuff because mm-hmm. I had been doing it for two years prior. And I just felt like it was such a, I just felt like it was a disservice to everything I'd created up until then. Yeah. I, I want to know too, in terms of your strategy with these skits, a lot of it, I'm sure you are inspired by, you know, whatever in your life and you create a skit on that. But a lot of it too is based on viewer comments. And I'm so curious because comments are such a crucial part of the platform in terms of like virality and engagement and getting you know your content in front right. of more people's eyes was that a conscious decision to increase engagement by doing the the comments as your next skits or where did that come no, from no it so it actually came from julia fox did like people commenting and telling her what to act out and she did it and it really came from this feeling of like me just I really do just like to engage with the community I really really didn't know that it was going to take off the way it did Mm -hmm. um and it almost feels like when a comedian does crowd work during stand-up it feels like a virtual stage doing virtual crowd work Mm -hmm. and that's just how I view it I never really think about it in terms of like okay well if I respond to this person's comment it's going to get in front of this many people I kind of do it just as if I'm like I know this sounds silly. I, I like I view myself as like a internet character, and like I'm like I have an audience, yeah. and I'm going off of what they said, and it's like one big improv class. Has it helped though to be basing your content off of those comments? And I mean, algorithmically, like has that, in your opinion, helped yeah. your viewership? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure because it encourages others to comment. Yeah. I think, I think, but I also do a bunch of other bits mm-hmm. that don't involve responding to comments. Like I'll do. Pussy PSAs, I'll do my nimming videos, I'll do what I had for lunch, I'll do take my meds with me, I'll do my dances. And and then I think it's almost like it's almost like a full show with a bunch of different bits. And then that part is my crowd work part. Yeah. You mentioned earlier too that there are so many comedy creators and you're not really sure, you know, why yours struck a chord with so many audience members. But in your strategy or your decision to post certain types of content, how do you try to differentiate yourself? I mean, obviously the skits are one thing, but a lot of people, like you said, do skits. So from from your opinion, from your perspective, what really sets you apart from the many, many other comedy creators on the app? I think it's, I think I'm just really, 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 I view my life as one big bit and I section off my TikToks into bits to keep people entertained. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just doing skits. I'll post three or four times a day. One will be a skit, one will be a pussy PSA, one will be a dance, one will be a food review, one will be take my meds with me. Like one will be, and it'll just be, like I'll view everything, like I lost my luggage once. (laughs) And I made it, and I, I made it an entire skit and then I started writing poetry. So I think maybe the reason why I've been able to cultivate something is because I'm almost creating this sketch show that isn't just a one note Mm -hmm. it's not a one note bit it's there's it's multifaceted there's like i I post like five times a day and each i make sure that each of the five is a different bit Mm -hmm. so that when people are scrolling through my tiktok at the end of the long day it's kind of like they're watching a mini sketch show with different bits with so many times posting a day so many different types of content stuff that you create you know that's i guess not part of your daily life like it is a character that you're putting on but also having the parts of your daily life that right. you are sharing. What is your relationship now with social media? I mean, I feel like there it's obviously helped you grow a lot, but there are so many, in, in many cases, either negative or, you know, all encompassing and very like mind intensive and, and mind and time consuming aspects of being a social media creator. Right. How has your relationship with social media changed or evolved from, you know, posting just for fun to now it being a career of yours? Um, well, now that it's a career of mine, I, I was always addicted to social media. Yeah. So that was never, that was not a new thing or whatever. <laughs> but now that it's a career of mine and like a career is almost on the line, I make a conscious effort to 
actually take time away and mm -hmm. watch TV or get inspiration from elsewhere because if I'm just on social media all day, then I'm I, I can't I can't think, I can't be creative, I can't do anything. So I think it's almost yeah, I, I, I do try to make, I try to, when I go to bed, I put my phone on the table and I watch TV, because mm -hmm. TV is where I get all my inspiration from. Yeah. When did you realize that this was turning into a, an actual long-term and a career with longevity? Was there a specific video, a, a number, a brand deal, a, an experience or an event that really showed you this is something that I can stick with and really put my time and energy and, and you know, life's work into? Um. I think, I think when I started discovering that there were so many doors that can be open because mm -hmm. of TikTok and because of the virality I had, I think that's when I realized, okay, I can make something out of this. It's it's not permanent, but it's definitely more permanent than it was before. And mm -hmm. I, I understand that the industry of like virality is so fickle as it is, but I once I realized there were doors open to things that were less fickle, as long as I put my time and energy into those things, I was like, okay, this is this is my career, this is my life, and I'm going to work my ass off to make sure that it stays that way. Mm -hmm. How do you determine the best business opportunities for you? And I'm sure that that has changed like from when you were just first gaining traction to now when you probably have more opportunities, but is there like a set of either guidelines or a checklist that you ensure that any opportunity that comes your way is really following? Yeah, um, I think it's, I, re, I think, I, I try to make, I, I think I think about my audience with everything I do. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna make sense? So if I wanna start a podcast, is that going to make sense? Would they care? And I feel like I know my audience well enough to really make that decision. But in addition to my audience, I consult my friends. Because this really, 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 and I know that sounds silly, like why would you consult your friends over business decisions? But I really feel like the audience is kind of like an amygdalation of my friends. Like, I feel like we're all so similar and like our humors are also similar. So like, if my friends are like, this is so cool, keep going with it, then I'll keep going with it. Obviously, you know, there's finances involved. If I'm spending more money and not getting enough back, then I'm like, okay, then is this really worth it? But at the end of the day, like, I I'm still trying to figure that out because it's almost like I'm investing in myself mm -hmm. and I, I have to like take myself out of myself and view me as a product and be like, okay, how is this gonna work? So I'm still trying to figure it out, which is why I like hesitated at first. But um, I really try to do things that are like authentic to me and that I'm really passionate about. I'm like, if I can see myself working on this for six months nonstop and be happy about it, that is something I would like to do. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right though, in terms of asking your friends because our generation like knows the creator economy best. We, right. You know, have right. created it and spearheaded it in many ways. So I assume that that also informs like what the general public is going to be interested in, like where our future I interests or priorities are going to lie when you have those conversations. Right. And if you were also referring to like business in terms of like paid ads mm -hmm. and stuff, the number one thing I drive home with those is that I, I need creative freedom. Yeah. Because then what's the point? Definitely. My audience isn't here to watch me sell a product, but if I can sell that product and be really funny about it because I have my creative freedom with it, let's do it. Yeah. And that was another question I had for you. Is it ever difficult or are there is there ever any hesitancy from brands to allow you to have complete free, creative freedom given that, you know, certain either catchphrases or right. whatever part of your brand of are not very like corporate friendly? How do those conversations work? Um they stop and start, or yeah. they start and stop, sorry. they If they're like, okay, well, we're not giving you creative freedom and this is what you have to do, then I probably won't do it. Totally. Is there anyone that you go to in the industry, whether that is a specific friend or another creator or a business mentor to really ask these questions? Someone who understands maybe like the creative side of things, but also the business side of the industry. Um, yeah, I go to two people. I go to my old boss, Zach, about business stuff. Um, and when it comes to public perception and really 
betting on yourself, I go to my friend Sophia mm -hmm. because she's been in it for like 10 plus years or honestly since she was a kid. And I really just, I take her word on everything. Definitely. You also made a comment that you sometimes take yourself out of yourself to like look at yourself yeah. as a product. Does that ever impact your mental health to see yourself in that light as opposed to really looking at it from like a personal or a well-being perspective and de determining your decisions based on that? No. Okay. Because I am so anxious about so many other things yeah. that like that's just like the least of my, like I'm so anxious about like my life in general and like if I'm breathing incorrectly that like that's just like okay I'm working. Yeah, definitely. Has it helped you to t kind of separate yes. your business side of yourself from yes. Jake as a person? I'll be like okay well this is work. Yeah, definitely. You know? What is the best piece of business advice that you have gotten from one of you know those two people that you mentioned or you know other people that you've talked to in the industry in general? To keep the people that were around you before, af keep them around after. Mm -hmm. It's the most important thing I've learned. And the next thing I want to ask about is, in terms of the creator economy and our generation, we've mentioned you know that your friends might know what's you know the next big thing or what might pop off online. Where do you see the creator economy going in the future, knowing that our generation and the generation below us is kind of leading the charge? I think we're going to see a really, really, really big focus if we haven't already less on trends mm -hmm. more on like authenticity and i think the people that are going to stand out are people that are just fully themselves and people and like kind of view their life as a bit because if you really think about alex earl like it's not a funny bit but it's a bit yeah. she's doing get ready with me she's doing she's going she's really documenting her life and a bit yeah like i said a bit doesn't have to be funny but as long as the bit is true to you and you're putting that on TikTok, I think that is what we're going to see more of. Less dance trends and, you know, people, I don't think people really care to see that as much. I think people want to see other people's lives. It's almost like TikTok is kind of like, it's feeling like what reality TV felt like in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's feeling like, like this kind of insight into other people's lives that we weren't getting before. And like, I think today reality TV is obviously still the huge biggest thing ever but i feel like it feels produced and i feel like as a society we gravitate to things that don't feel as produced and i think tiktok whether it be produced or not people gravitate towards so i think people that share their lives in bits i think that is something we'll see a lot more of yeah yeah right i mean like the first season of the kardashians is so different from so it's, <laughs> the, it's the new season it's crazy different yeah how do you think that that's going to impact business decisions and brand deals or brand partnerships as content kind of continues to evolve um i mean i've noticed that it's hard for some brands to keep up sometimes mm -hmm. but i think what's really important is that if creators really push for creative freedom and the ads that they do they will be those ads will be more successful than the other ads so hopefully brands will see that and kind of almost allow the creators to take control of how they're going to tell their product story Definitely. with whatever they're advertising what is one thing that you would tell brand partners in terms of finding either successful creators to work with or finding ways to work with creators successfully is there a piece of advice you have for that side of the business yeah trust the creator yeah trust them like like they know their audience the best and you want that ad to do well trust them definitely and as part of the under 30 community now yes. i want to talk about age a little bit because i think that different industries have very different ideas about like what age means and right. how that impacts either success or trajectory or longevity in a career how do you see age coinciding with the social media space right now and the work that you're doing I mean, I worry every day. Like, I, I think about my age all the time because I'm like, I'm 24, I'm not 16. And I feel like people get bored easily, like, as I get older. So, I don't know. Like, it just, the older I grow, the more I want to keep people entertained because I want to stick around. Yeah. So that's how I view my age. I know. When I turned 25 this year, I had an existential crisis. Yeah, I mean, I, girl. me every day. <laughs> I turned 24 and I was like, why am I not happy? <laughs> I know. So where do you see, what do you think under 30 means to you then? Either being part of this community or being under that age, what does that mean in your eyes? I mean, it makes me, it makes me feel like I'm not the only, like, when I bet on myself, like it, it's worth it because other people are also betting on me because the under 30 is kind of like a bet, right? Like Forbes is kind of like, we think these people are going to do great things. 
So it feels, first of all, I never thought I would ever be on any under 30 list ever. I would always see it growing up. Never, ever thought I would come anywhere close to it. So I woke up like absolutely floored. But second of all, it is a really great feeling that someone else that's not you is also betting on your success. Definitely. And why do you think you made the list? I mean, there's, like I was mentioning earlier, a long process and many people that, you know, either weigh in, nominate, vote on the final 30. What do you think about you and your career stood out? I think that my content is very silly. It's very funny. It's very lighthearted. But at the end of the day, I also understand it's a business and I work out all the different facets of my business. I have merch, podcast stuff coming up. I have live shows. I have TikTok ads. I have overall brand deals. Like I really build out each facet of my business. And I think I I view myself as not just a TikTok creator, but like as a as a business. And I think that that is, I, I, I mean, I hope that that's why I made the under 30 class because I was also, I think the most important part, sorry, is that I was able to cultivate a really loyal audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. A really, really loyal audience that I really connect with. Well, and I would venture to guess too that you're on many people's For You pages. Like you just are influential in the space because of all those things that you've done, the community that you've been able to create. So I think that, that also made an impact. <laughs> uh, I hope. <laughs> and the last thing I wanna to touch on is your movement into the future. You mentioned earlier that you know that social media is not necessarily permanent for your career or right. the industry in general. Where do you hope to take this? How do you think that being on social media now and the community and the, the creator that you've built for yourself and the characters that you've built for yourself are going to move into the future? I want to do a lot more live shows. Mm -hmm. um, I want And I want to act really, really badly. I know a lot of people laugh at me for it, but I really do want to do that. And I'm starting a podcast soon. And I would ideally like to start that podcast and take it on the road. And I think that's what will take me from, I mean, that's what I hope will take me from social media to traditional media. Yeah. Do you think that that's going to be a hard jump to make? Because many creators yes. have done it now, but I think that there yes. still is like a stigma uh, around that leap. I think it's going to be hard, but I'm, I'm ready to work. I mean, I, I have been working and I'm ready to continue working to make that transition. Yeah, well, that's super cool. And the very last thing I want to ask you is, in terms of the under 30 community, many of our viewers are under 30, either listers or aspiring listers. What's one thing that they might not know about you that you want them to know? When success happens, all the problems in your head that you have prior about yourself and your image and your anxiety and whatever, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. Success does not make that go away at all. If anything, it just kind of maybe it elevates it. But I think, yeah, that I still deal with the same shit that I dealt with before. Do you have any advice on dealing with that? Because I think a lot of people definitely go through that on social media and everywhere else in this world. Yeah, watch TV. Yeah, that's my. It's the only. It works better than therapy. Okay. Transport yourself into another world. Yeah. What show are you watching right now? Girls, I'm rewatching. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's How sick. exciting. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jake. Thanks for, for having today. me. I'm so excited to get to know more about you and the business that you're creating for yourself. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me.